Live. I am Misty Doan and I am joined today by my beautiful daughter, Ashlyn. We are so excited to be here with you. So Ash, we usually started off to, by seeing where people are tuning in from. So you want to tell us what you see here? Um, Arkansas. Yes. Yeah, Indiana. It, yeah. Brenda from Indiana. Trudy Maryland. from Maryland. Peggy from California. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, we have our good friend and knowledge master Liz back here on the mic so she'll be Hi, helping everybody. yeah she'll be helping with questions and things um, as they come along today we're super super excited we're going to talk about uh, sewing or quilting Boston. with kids Boston yeah and how to get started oh she's here with her daughters Emma is here with her daughters Betty and Iris thank you guys so much for watching thanks for being here that's so fun I love it so Ashlyn has become quite the quilter, right? Yeah. So you want to tell them um, about your quilt? Because you made this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't really know what to <laughs> say about it. Aww. So she made this. This is her first big quilt project, right? You've mm -hmm. done lots of little projects. Mm -hmm. And she decided she was ready to make a quilt for her bed. And so this is the quilt that she made. It, isn't it beautiful? We love it so much. It uses this... Uh, flower market charm pack and the beautiful border yardage and then she used this uh, print from the line for her backing and it just turned out so great and like i said she's made lots of little projects that got her ready for this but i think it's so amazing that 11 years old you made a quilt for your bed and you're pretty proud of it right yeah yeah it was hard work and you did it she laid it out with me and you sewed everything but the borders all by yourself yeah. right mm -hmm. yep so i helped her with the borders and she did all of, oh sorry <laughs> i whacked her she did all of the squares herself and so i'm going to show you kind of how we got you started we can we can tell them what you did to learn right mm -hmm. okay so first up we have a great printable that we put together for you guys um, so tips for having fun quilting with kids it's got some great little tips on the front and then the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is either grab some like lined notebook paper or um, we've included this in the printable and it's just some practice sewing straight lines. That is step number one is getting kids comfortable with the machine. And so what I actually like to do, let's get this, I have a seam guide on here cause that's another thing that helps, but I'm actually going to unthread this if you want to use colorful thread so that you can see the stitches, you can do that. Um, and kids sometimes think that's really fun because they can see it. But I'm actually just going to unthread this and we are going to sew with the needle right on these lines. And so I'm going to let Ashlyn do that and show you guys how this works. And the needle will perforate it. You, can, you don't even have to worry about that, sis. The needle will perforate it so they'll be able to see where they stitched without wasting any thread. So I don't have to put this down? You still want to put your presser foot okay. down, yep. And she's just going to line that up. There we go. And this is the first step. Kids need to be able to sew straight or as straight as, as they can. And so by using paper, you're not going to, you know, waste your fabric stash and feel um, like it's too wasteful. And so then again, you can, you can just cut your thread like we do at home. This is the same as at home and you can do it again if you want. And so there's lots of lines on there for them to get the hang of it. And then here, let's pull it over here and you can show them. It's easier to see even on the back. You can see her nice straight stitches. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Yeah, looks awesome. Do you remember doing this on notebook paper? Mm -hmm. Yeah, grandma did that with you and we did yeah. that too, huh? That's awesome. Okay, and then we also have this uh, maze that we've printed for you. And the reason that you want the kids to do this is because once they've mastered a straight line, then the next thing in sewing is starting, stopping, and pivoting. And so by following this maze, it allows them to learn all of that, again, without fabric. And so, sis, do you want to start this and just show sure. how we might go about that? 
And we're getting a lot of folks saying you did such a great job. Isn't she do Isn't so good? I was just overjoyed for her. She and so proud. So incredibly proud. And we had so much fun doing it. Oh. And these are your favorite colors? Is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she wanted it to match her room. And so I mean, and purple, but I like those. Yeah, too. she likes purple too, which it doesn't have purple in it, but there's little bitty flowers that have some purple in there, huh? Mm -hmm. So a little bit. But she was just so excited and and now she has a new quilt that she'll get to take home and put on her bed. So she's very thrilled. All right, let's show them this, this fun maze and how it, how it helps learn to stop and start. And so we do have the needle down on our um, machine. And so then she can keep the needle down and lift her presser foot and turn. And remember, these printables are totally free, so you can print them off and reuse them as many times as you want. And Misty, would you recommend a new needle before or after that paper? I mean, optimally, yes. If you're like me, you're probably just gonna keep stitching, <laughs> if we're being totally honest. But absolutely, it can get, it can do a little, uh, it can make it a little dull to have to work through that paper. But, you know, again, if you've got an old needle that you know you're about ready to change anyway, it's probably the perfect time to get your kids up there and give them a chance to practice. So there you go. You're doing great. I got it a little. Oh, you, that's okay. Line. Yep, she went a little bit too far. But that's all right. Remember, it's just practice. And so I'll let her keep stitching on that maze. And I'll go over just a few of the um, tips that we have here. And so the first thing that I want to recommend is obviously practice on paper first. It gives them the hang of stitching and working with the machine without the frustration that can sometimes come with fabric. They're only dealing with one layer and so they really learn how to maneuver and, and handle the machine and how the machine itself works before we add in that fabric element. So I think that's really important. Um, and then once they've mastered that, which Ashlyn, do you feel like you've mastered your, your paper sewing? I would say so. So once they've mastered that and can do these two exercises that we've, we've included, let's, let's talk about the next things that we do to make it easier, right? Yeah. Okay. So first up, you wanna talk about this on the machine? Um, yeah, so this is just washi tape and you can choose any pattern you want. Yep, or we have like painter's tape here or masking tape would work exactly the same. And you just put it like on the thing as like a seam guide. Exactly, and so we use it all the way across um, the machine so it gives her a big visual area of where she wants to line up that fabric and that marks our quarter inch seam. And so remember, if you're not quilting, if you know they, they want to make something else, you can just adjust where you put that tape for whatever seam allowance you need. And it just gives them a bigger visual representation of what they're trying to do and it gives them a place to line up their fabric. And, and it can be colorful. And it can be colorful and fun, exactly, which we like. And so do you wanna show how you would line this up? Oh, let's re-thread this really quick. Since we took out our thread, let me just get this. And we're also seeing people say, you know what? I can use this for myself as an adult too. It's good it's tips, good, helpful right? Tips. Yeah, exactly. And it is a great time right now to learn a new skill, so. And you could use paper to practice all kinds of stitches, right? Like you could also practice doing your free motion quilting if you wanted that's to. That's a great idea, Liz, because that's something that I've been trying to learn myself, is I really want to improve my free motion, and I never thought to use paper. I have all the, the quilt sandwiches, but I'm out of quilt sandwiches. I've quilted them to all get out now, and um, <laughs> it would be good to use some paper just to practice the stitching itself. Okay, so we've got this re-threaded. She's got her washi tape on here, and so she's just you're just gonna use that as the guide, right? Yep. And you can see here, instead of just lining up right there by the needle, this gives her a much longer line to follow and keep that fabric where she needs it. Mm-hmm. All right, take it away, girlfriend. You go. You can cut your thread. Perfect. Bring it over here. 
Thank Look how great. That looks awesome, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we can open it up. Nice straight seams. I love that. Thanks. Okay. So then once, I mean, usually if I'm just starting on the basic stitches, I use kind of some scrap fabrics that we have laying around. And so do you want to talk about, this is one of the very first things you made, right? Mm -hmm. So um, she just... So it's just a pillow. Yeah. And I put, what's this called again? Uh, that is called Cuddle. Cuddle on the back. And so I made she, it for my dolls. Yeah, she made this for her dolls. She probably made this when she was about eight. Um, and so the other thing you need to remember is we're doing this together the whole time. And so obviously this isn't something she's tackling completely by herself yet. Although mm -hmm. the last half of these squares, she pretty much sewed all by herself. She just figured out she knew how to lay them out, how to handle all of that because she had... I woke up in the morning. Yeah, and, and she started it. sewing without even telling me, which was awesome because then she had it all done. And so this little pillow, she put um, 12 of the five inch squares together. And you can see here, this is not perfect. And that's kind of the whole point is we don't care about perfection. We just want kids to have fun sewing and have fun making creative things for their house and that they can use. And so it makes it really fun. And so she's kept this. And like I said, you were about eight. <laughs> That's what we're guessing. And yeah. then she also brought some of the other things that she practiced. Because we thought it would be fun for you to see how, how much she's improved over the years. And so this is one of the first charm pack quilts she started. And you, I, I don't know if you guys can see here. Can you, can you see this, Isaac? Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can see... Her stitches aren't real even, and her mm -hmm. little points here, none of these line up. And she got very frustrated by it, which is why this sat in a pile and wasn't completed. <laughs> but again, that's okay. It's fun that we have it now because as she's continued to practice, she can go back and look at this and see how far she's come. Um, mm -hmm. And so the other thing we do is we, you always kind of pick a, a charm pack that you like, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. And so when they're working on fabric that they love, they're way more likely to stick it out and stick with it if it's something that they're excited to look at and to sew with. And so I would absolutely recommend letting your kids hop on and pick out a charm pack. They're very affordable and they're in a wide variety of, um, you know, collections and options. There's truly something for everyone. And then the first um, full project we made is like one of these little quilts, right? You this wanna hold... one was first. Oh, this one was first? Okay. Yeah. You wanna hold that up? So this one's a little smaller. She didn't, we didn't have a full charm pack for this, right? No. Yeah, and so this is just four by six. But on this one, she was really working on her corners and they look so good there. Mm -hmm. And then she made this one. And hold that one up. This one's a little bigger. Yeah, this is, so this is the size that one charm pack will make. It'll be six by seven. So that's really fun. And remember, you can add borders. It's a great little, little you know, doll quilt if they have dollies. So that's really fun. So this if you're just joining us, what we're looking at is how to have some tips for quilting with kids. And Ashlyn yes. is Misty's daughter is showing us the big quilt she made yes. behind her and exactly. the smaller projects she's made along the way. Misty, when can I start kids on quilting? Yeah. I have someone here says currently they're making some fabric mosaics with glue sticks at four. When Which would you get I on a sewing that. machine? I love that so much. That's such a great idea because then at least they're involved, right? So if you didn't hear that, they're making fabric mosaics. Um, I, th I think that one was from a grandma, right? While their grandma is sewing, which what a wonderful way to keep them involved even when they're not quite ready to be at a machine. I usually start my kids about eight. That's when I find that their attention span is there and they're, they're excited about it. My, um, my youngest Ezra is actually very excited about sewing now. He is nine and um, has, he's about to this point. This is where we're at with Ezra. He's, He's made some very, you know, basic, fun projects that he's he excited about this. He started on this one. He did? He helped uh -huh. you with this one, too? That's awesome. I, like, finished it up for him. Yeah, that's so good. And I, I know he's excited to, to pick out some fabric for his own, and mm -hmm. so he'll keep working. Um, some other tips that as, as they're ready to really start stitching, um, 
So again, this washi tape is a great idea. You can also add, we have one of these magnetic seam guides and this is just, I kind of put it closer to the needle. And so when the stitching is actually happening, that can sit right on the machine. It's super strong. And so even if they're kind of pushing a little bit, it's not gonna move out of the way and it's gonna keep that seam more even and give them a little more success, which is great. Mm -hmm. yeah, any other, other tips that you can think of? Um, I don't know. Not just... sure? <laughs> What made you pick the fabric that you used for your quilt, Ashlyn? Um, well, I really like the patterns and the colors. It's so cute, isn't it? Yeah. It's really fun. And I really like the different checkerboard ones. Yeah, she loves buffalo check, and so she was very excited that this was still a girly print that had some buffalo check in it. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. I also like the polka dots. Yeah. There's polka dots. All the different colors. It's so happy. It's going to look so cute in your room. Yeah. Yeah. And so then let's show them because we did bring, um, just so you guys could see kind of how we, we do this, we started one in the same fabric out of a charm pack. So should we lay this out? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And you can see she, we've sewn this one together. And so this is how many rows do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. Five six five by six okay so then this one is already sewed together there's a whole row let's move it down can you reach up here and you want to lay this mm -hmm. one out i think it goes that way i think is how you had it mm, like this yeah and so we just took some time together to lay it out um how we liked it we just work on the floor, huh? Yeah. We lay it out on the floor. And then do you want to talk that? about how you fold it? Do you, do you want to turn this one so that it's... Oh, yeah. That really bothered her when we were sewing. She wanted anything that was directional to be <laughs> upright. So <laughs> so that's... I don't personally mind about that too much, but, but we were... She wanted to check for that. So all of her little words are all upright on her quilt. Yeah. Um, so you can watch for those things. Do you want to talk about how you fold these and take them to the machine? Um, I, did I, do I do it like that? Yep, and then you sew on that side. Yeah, and then I sew on this side, Yeah. And then it just folds out. You, so you can stitch that one if you want. Okay. You want to stitch these few so we can just show them how this works? Yeah. All right, and I'll get these ready for you. How many charm packs did you use for this quilt? Four. For the big one is four, yeah. and then um, she wanted it just a little bit bigger, so I helped her add the borders. And so we did a three inch inner border, and then we have six inches on the side borders, and we did eight top and bottom just to make it a little bit longer for her bed. But it turned out, but yeah, that's, that's four charm packs, and so it's 12 across and 14 down on the squares. All right, I'm gonna oh. stitch a few of these. Did you find the pinked edges tricky when you're doing this? So that's a great question. Uh, did, did you find the pinked edges tricky? The little, pink. that's the little spiky parts on there. Those are called um, pinked edges. No, I don't really. I don't think so either. And I think what is so great, especially if you're using the washi tape or the seam guide, the pinked edges kind of become irrelevant you're using that to just guide your fabric, and so you forget they even exist as long as the two pieces are lined up. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say that's true? Yeah, and I think it's kind of easier to line them up because like the little peaks kind of peek through. Yeah, I think so, like, you can kind of see each other. Up. I think that's true. And so for kids, I think it's actually really helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, take it away. Now, if you have a machine, um, this machine that we're sewing on, this is the Baby Lock Accomplish, and I have the older version, the Jane, at home, and so that's what she's used to sewing on. But if you, here's this one. And then I it like that. Oh, that one got turned around. Yeah, like that. Like that. There you go, and it's that side. Um, this, this machine doesn't have a speed control, but a lot of machines do, and that's another great thing for kids. Um, because they sometimes get a little heavy on the foot pedal, you can turn that speed control down and that will, you know, hopefully I, not scare them. I did that a couple of yes. times. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so 
there's just a lot of little things you can do. I also heard um, someone had mentioned in the comments that you could put a sponge under the foot pedal, which gives them a little more resistance when they're pushing against it. I haven't tried that. Um, my kids have, have kind of mastered the foot pedal now, but I think it's worth, worth uh -oh. trying if you run into it. What's the matter? I think. Did it come unthreaded? I think so. Okay. I don't know how to lift it up. Just right here. And then you turn this. Oh, that thing. Yep. I know how to get the needle up. That's all right. What so mom, you it? help with re-threading. Do you help with the pressing and cutting too? I do. But um, again, as we sew projects, we kind of add a new skill each time. So on this quilt that she made behind us, you did most of the pressing too. Do you want to mm -hmm. talk about what we taught you about pressing it? Um, so with the little like... Here, you can go around me so they can see you. And the, I'll thread this. With these things? Your seams? Um, I would like take the iron and I use the mini one most of the time, but like, well, on these ones at least, and I just go like that and then iron it. You rolled it back, huh? So mm -hmm. you made sure you didn't have any pleats or folds. And then did we do, like did we do something with the rows? Do you remember that? Um, How? Like the, the different. So yeah, one row went one way and the next went the other right yeah yeah you see, see this like one's being that. and then they meet up right mm -hmm. like this one's this way and that one's that way yeah. nice work ashlyn so did you like using the smaller iron because it fit in your hands better um yeah and i just felt like like whenever you're only doing the rows it's easier because like it's not as big and bulky i guess there we go. That was being difficult. One more question for you, Ashlyn. People want to know, do you have a favorite quilt your grandma made, Grandma Jenny? Um, not really. Um, I I can't remember what it was called. Which one? Which one are you thinking it of? It was like the flower one. Oh, with the daisies? Yeah, I think so. I don't I, know. I can't remember what it's called either. It has like flowers on it. But she's made a lot of quilts, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of hard to they're, pick one. Yeah, there's a lot and they're pretty cute. All right, so that is all ready to go if you want to try again. Okay. All right. So do we have any other questions coming through on the, the comments? Anything else, Liz, that we We're haven't We're getting covered? lots of great comments about how Ashlyn is doing a beautiful job and Isn't will someday great? be hosting live for us. I know, <laughs> she's um, so great. And just lots of great comments about people starting this with their kiddos yeah. and even if you're just starting it laying them out yes and then you'll sew exactly i just think did it come unthreaded again well you <laughs> yeah. know what we'll just finish this later that's yeah. no big deal and the other thing is this is a great point sometimes frustrations happen and with kids that's usually a time to just walk away and take a break like mm -hmm. we don't as adults it's much easier for us to push through frustrations but with kids it's not the whole point is really for them to have fun and learn. And so it's okay if they don't finish it. It's okay if it sits undone in a pile for, like years. <laughs> for years and years and years because for them it really is about learning mm -hmm. and coming back. Because for her, when she went back and saw this, it was so exciting, right, to mm -hmm. see the difference. Yeah. You're pretty proud of yourself, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, like, look at that iron. Like, I didn't know really how to iron it. Yeah. Very much. But the point is that you tried and you stuck with it and now you've made a quilt for your bed. Yeah. Which is awesome. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope this gave you the courage to try sewing with your kids and grandkids. And you and have something yeah. else? So can you just show us one more time, Ashley, would you like to show us the back of your quilt? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Here, you wanna do this Sorry. corner? Here we go. Like that. And then you can stand on the other side. There you go, and hold it. Perfect. Beautiful. Isn't that so pretty? That is from the same line. Let me, where did I, I put Misty, that? Could you tell us one more time what right that there? line was? The whole, oh, it's under here. It is called Flower Market by Jen Allison for Riley Blake. And it is a beautiful line. Loving it. I even got the flower thing. Yes, and we used a cute um, flower oh. pattern in the quilting. Just turned out so great. So thank you guys so much for being, being here. Thank you, Ashlyn, for being brave and coming on mm -hmm. with me and sewing with me. Mm -hmm. I love it. 
It's a lot of fun. So we hope you guys have a fabulous week and we will see you soon.